Hey everybody, this is Tyler coming at you today with a salt cellar build. Basically it's a little bowl that you put your salt and pepper in. It's easy to take a pinch out when you're cooking and throw it in your food. You can actually thank my butterfingers for this project today. A little while back I somehow managed to knock the old stone salt cellar off the counter, shattering it to about a million pieces on the floor. So I figured I'd better do it right by the wife and put a new one together for her. I don't want to lay it, but I wanted to get something at least kind of circular in shape for this uh, salt cellar. So what I decided to do is I decided to cut the red heart here with 45 degree angles on it. And then I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, not just a square box. So I put these other pieces walnut there. So the joinery, I just wanted to go super simple. I had a bunch of old dowel pins lying around, so I figured I'd use them up on this project. Here I'm just going through and marked where all the holes needed to be drill them all out and use walnut pieces first on the drill press because I want these to be perfectly perpendicular to the wood. And then you'll see how I come back later and do them on the red heart pieces. For the bottoms, I actually use a little bit different of a technique. I've never tried this before. I've seen a bunch of people do it and it's really popular. But basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting a slot in every piece. And then what I'm doing right here is moving it over a little bit. And after I move it over a little bit, it gives me just enough room where I can put the eighth inch bolted birch plywood inside that slot. So after I moved the fence over and cut that second pass through it, I had to go through and check just to make sure that fit was right. And after I was happy with that fit, what I'm going to do next is make the second bottom of it with salt and pepper, so I have to make two bottoms for it. You see this going through the motions the same way again, running it through one time, getting that slot in there right there, and then moving the fence over just enough so that blade will cut a little bit more out of there so I'm not going to it with this second. So now that I have the top and the bottoms cut in all these little pieces, I can start putting them together and doing all the joinery on them. All the pieces of red heart were a little bit trickier to get the dowel pins the right angle on. They ended up being a decent amount of slot for them, which is probably good for getting them clamped together and glued together coming up here in a little while. I had a little bit of a problem with all of my cuts being an accurate angle, and I think that was mostly due to how uh, worn out my saw blade was. Recently changed it out, and I didn't really realize exactly how bad my old one was getting to be. I put the new ones in there and just cut through so much better and the angle seems so much more accurate. I think it's because my sled was kind of moving around a little bit in the channels with me having to put that much force onto it and putting it through. I ended up gluing this together in a couple of different pieces. So I did these two kind of half clamshells like this and with those inaccurate cuts I was talking about when I put these together, they didn't quite join up parallel. So I took them over the belt sander off camera. That made the 90 degree corners on those pieces of walnut fit perfect and there's a lot less, a lot fewer gaps in the glue up after I did. So now what I'm doing here is I'm getting out that eighth inch Baltic birch plywood and I'm going through and marking out everything for the bottom. So I used the actual pieces of wood that I was going to be fitting the bottoms in because they weren't an exact predictable geometric shape. And here you can see me adding, I don't know, probably about a quarter of an inch onto each one, which was how deep those channels were cut into the main body of it. I probably should have actually gotten a little bit bigger and just trimmed them down to size after I'm cutting them because I did have to position them exactly right in the channels. So I'm using the scroll saw for this. I tend to use my scroll saw more for kind of like mini band saw work than I do for actually scroll sawing. So I changed out a little bit thicker of a blade so I can get some more straight, accurate cuts on stuff like that. This video was already getting a little bit long, so I stained those bottom pieces off of camera just with off the shelf stain to get a those in yards. And then we are now ready for the final glue up. So, put all the little dowel pins in. I ended up having to cut those in half just because if I would have kept them full length, they would have gone to the edge of the red heart. I wanted to make sure they were poking through after I sanded stuff down on there. I've seen some people that will leave the bottom parts of the boxes uh, free floating in there. But I didn't want to do that because if these did end up moving around, like I said, I cut them a tad bit small so you could potentially get some leakage around the bottom from this all going through. And as any good worker knows, you can never have enough clamps on something. The mating surfaces, like I said, weren't quite straight, so I had to put clamps on from all kinds of different angles just to make sure that it came out as tight as possible. 
Then, of course, after that, I had to take it over to the belt sander. And I actually cut off the, those little protrusions with the saw and then took it over the belt sander. I ended up using those a little bit later in the video. I'll show you that. Now, this was by far the most nerve wracking part of doing this. I wanted all the grains to match up, so I made it all in one big piece. But then I had to take it over the table saw and cut the whole thing apart. You could see a little bit earlier there how the saw blade was smoking quite a bit, and that was because it was so dull. But well, there's two parts. Let's see how the bottom's turned out. So, after I got everything together, there's a little bit of glue in the joints, and I wanted to make the inside a little bit more round. It didn't have to be perfectly round, but I didn't like how just like the big flat surfaces looked when you opened up the top on it. So I found the biggest drum sander that I had in my drill press and munched down on it. I made a pretty quick work of it as long as you have uh, fresh sandpaper. So these are those little overhangs that were I took off with a saw before I took it over to the belt sander. At this point I didn't know I was going to use them in my project, I was going to put them together for something else. But you will see how I end up using them later. And something I think is kind of highly underrated as a wood clean is electrical tape. I use this all the time for little tiny pieces like this. It's more than enough force and you can get them exactly how you want to position them and just stretch that stuff up. So for the design I'm using, I wanted all three pieces to be able to move independently of each other. The pepper, the salt, and the top. Right here I'm centering the whole of the piece of wood right there. I'm going to drill a cavity down through the top. And then, since I needed to match up exactly, what I'm going to do is flip that around, stick it on there, line it up. And I'm going to put the drill bit through it. I'm going to push it down enough so that brad just makes a little indentation on the bottom part. And that's going to give me this little point here that I can index my drilling off of. That's just going to ensure that everything gets completely lined up when it gets put together. And now, when you almost get to the very bottom, you're always going to flip it over so you avoid tear out on the bottom or put a little bit of masking tape over it. So now, finally, I'm moving on to the top here. I need to have the bottom piece all correctly done so I can figure out the exact shape for it. Uh, so I'm marking it all out, and I'm going to take it over the scroll saw. It was pretty wild doing it on the scroll saw like this. I didn't really realize how much that grain was going to distort after I cut through it. But, man, you cut through it, it just pops back. It releases all that tension. It was a bear to get that scroll saw blade out. So I wanted that walnut to match the side pieces, but I also wanted a little bit more interest on the top. I didn't know exactly what direction I was going, but I knew I wanted something kind of curly. And so I got looked at my veneers and I found this one. I'm not sure if it's walnut, but the color is close enough and it matches really well after everything's finished. We're getting this put on. Uh, what I end up doing with it is I get all the glue on the back, and then I put something cushiony over there. Sometimes I use like a dish rag, sometimes I use uh, paper towels like this. Put two boards on it clamp them together, and then just let them dry. So while that was drying, I went back over the scroll saw. I want to make the second layer of the top here. Uh, basically what I wanted to do is I cut it out, and then I went back to these calipers. I set them to how thick I wanted the piece to be. I made a little scribe line all the way around. A consistent thickness all the way around the rim. So you can see I didn't drill a hole in the middle. I just cut straight through the edge here. And the reason I did that is because it's easy enough when you just have one entry point and really thin curve on your blade to go back in, throw some glue on here like I did, throw a clamp on it, and you'll never even see that transition after the glue is all dried. I don't think I can find it if I look for it right now. So we're coming back here the next day. The veneer is totally dried on the walnut base there. I did have to come back and sand and use some razor blades to get all that paper towel off of there. I do have to make a quick trip back over to the drum sander here. If you don't get this inside edge right now, it's going to be a bear to sand, but it's all glued together. So I had a little bit of a problem here. I already drilled this hole, and I had a threaded insert I wanted to get in here. But I also wanted to sink it down a little bit so that that uh, perimeter edge can lay down flat on it. I learned kind of a cool trick from the Duresta channel. It's so basically with this piece of wood, you can force a bit, drill a hole in it. What this does is it gives you a different reference point. Usually the Forstner bits, they have that little brad on the point. You stick that exactly where you want the center to be. Well, if you try and do that in a hole that's already there, that bit's going to wander around and just tear up everything around there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to locate that hole exactly where I want it. I'm going to take that threaded insert out. And then what you'll be able to see is it will reference off of the side of that hole that I already drilled to the other piece of wood and go exactly where I want it to. So test fitting in there, it looks like it's flush, and I'll be able to go on. So now I'm mixing up the two-part epoxy here. 
and put it in that cafe I just drilled and then put in the insert in. After I put the trim piece around the edge, I didn't want you to be able to see this piece of hardware, so I'm putting a piece of masking tape over there and cutting out the section where the hole is and then laying it back on the veneer. The veneer's not going to match exactly, but it's not something you're probably going to notice. I usually use a razor to cut out veneer uh, when you're trying to get something done quick, scissors work fine. Mixed up a little bit more two-part epoxy. I'm going to put it over the head of that screw that I had already sunk down in there, and I'm going to put the veneer on top of that. So after the two-part epoxy had cured, I went back, sanded everything down to make sure it was flush, at least well enough for this uh, trim piece to fit around there. And while I was applying the glue, I was trying to squeeze it out towards the outer edge of this ring. Uh, you see I still got some glue squeezed out in there. I'm going to minimize that as much as possible because it's going to be almost impossible to sand around that inside edge there. So I put on a bunch of clamps, let her dry, and now we have it all in one piece. So we got to get all the clamps off of there. After the clamps are off, what we're going to do is we're going to take over the belt sander. I tried to cut them as close as possible, but they're inevitably going to be a little bit of lip. So I went over the belt sander to smooth it all off. Now up to this point, I still didn't really know I was going to put in the center of that lid. Uh, going back to those pieces I cut off and glued together into a square, I decided to just kind of freeform them on the belt sander and make some kind of interesting organic looking curves on them. I didn't know exactly what shape or size would look good on there, so I ended up making a few bigger pieces, and then I ended up going back and snapping those bigger pieces, fixing the ends on them. I ended up deciding then, so if a random pattern that I had at first is something a little bit more symmetrical would fit the piece better. So, after I had all these pieces rounded out on the belt sander, I arranged them how I thought they would look good on there. I didn't want to use wood glue. I wanted it to dry really quick, so I just used some super glue on them. All I had to do was sit them there while I drizzled the epoxy over the top of them. The epoxy I'm using here is the same Max CLR that I use in all my carbon fiber stuff. Drizzle it over the top. I'm going to use these little stir sticks just to make sure that I get it flowing all over everything really well. After I hit that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light up the propane torch. You do that, you can see all the bubbles popping right when I go over it with there. Makes it a bit clearer um, the laser to see through. So that takes a little while to cure. While that was curing, what I did was I went back over here. Now these uh, holes I drilled up through here, they weren't the exact same size as the thread of rod that was coming up through the bottom. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to positively locate them. I figured the best thing I could do was put this little metal spacer in here, and that way there wouldn't be any misalignment as you were opening and closing the pieces. So with everything basically done and put together, what I did was I put that threaded rod through there, tightened everything down, and this is just me going through with the random marble sander, getting the finish right, but also making sure that all those little gaps are correct too. Going through the grids, the last grid I use in the random orbital sander is about 320, and then I think I went from 400 to 600 on the wood here. Use that wipe on poly on pretty much all my projects lately. As you can see here, it is super easy to apply. Now, if I did this project again, I think I would do it a little differently. And the only thing I would do differently would be the mechanism I use so that the pieces can rotate. I think I would try and put something on the top independent of the top piece. What happens now is that when I open or close the very top part of it, it will loosen and tighten the screw. I thought there would be enough slot in the bottom of it where it would just kind of rotate the whole uh, threaded part, but that hasn't really been the case. Um, it's not unworkable at all, it's still easy to use, but I just feel like it could be a little bit better if there's a separate nut on the very top where you can adjust the tension on it. So that gripe aside, it has actually been really nice to have that back in the kitchen. I'm doing the first fill up here, sticking the salt in the top, closing it up, see how it opens up, get the pepper in the bottom there, and we are ready to do some cooking. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below here. If it's your first time and you like what you saw, please click that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys soon.